how to create a multi sound effect with pulse without having a glitch so each sound has been independent and has been filtered not to be spawned too often so you get a more interesting effect that's what it's look like so all right let's dive in okay let's start at the beginning with a third person shooter map um, so we're gonna have the few things we need for that so let's create a a folder for that we're gonna call this uh, sound effects or maybe multi multi sound effects bus because that's what we're looking for so in that folder i'm gonna create of course a little blueprint an actor blueprint ball multi sound effects like that all right uh, and we're gonna have mm, simple mesh static mesh like this and we're gonna have the sphere mm, i think the default sphere like this guy perfect okay and we are gonna also create a material material um sound effects like that and it's gonna be a very basic material like the classic just gonna be fine and let's put this at one okay so we got everything so i'm gonna now associate that oops material to this guy here there we go so now let's go to work on the object itself so basically the goal here is when this guy have a physics simulation enabled and it receive a hit collision create an event like this guy and we're just gonna spawn a sound all right that's the spawn sound at location I don't want to attach it anywhere, it's just going to spawn there. Get actor location. There we go. And let's find a little sound. Maybe this. Let's see what else do we have a little bit. Chop item. That's perfect. There we go. And now we're gonna drop the object and we'll see in Let's resize the sky a little bit. Put it in front of us like this. And, and now you can see how bad it is. It doesn't work. Right. So how do we fix this kind of stuff? So it's quite it's quite easy. So we're gonna use another technique to spam this guy because I think it's we're gonna do a lot of tests and I prefer to have it directly from the from the third person character. There we go. So we're gonna spawn actor from class. structure so we get actor location again get actor forward vector so then we're looking forward we multiply this maybe by uh, two 250 units and we add this to this guy like this and that's where we're gonna spawn it just a little bit ahead of us all right and of course we need to put our blueprint sound effects that's the guy here there we go so let's try this now so we get a big gigantic ball. my ball is a little bit big <laughs> i'm gonna try just to minimize this ball i think there's another sphere and then put this sphere here. There we go. So 
So this is terrible, all right? We all agree. Every time those few move, they create this aggressive sound. So how to fix that? So we're gonna do a multiple thing. So the first things to do is to, in the Invent Graph, when we span a sound at location, there's a nice feature here called concurrency setting. All right, so this is what we're looking for. So we're gonna create that in the same folder here. You go under sound, concurrency. Let's go on the sound effects sound concurrency. And we're just gonna put it there. There we go. So what this guy does is very really simple. You can play 16 sound at the same time. You can attach it to or not to a owner, but we don't have any owner. Uh, the resolution rule is stop the furthest and the oldest, and you have the retrigger time. So that's the basic things to have in place. So if we play that, it's still not working. All right. But we get something in place now. So what's happening now is we we want to check if the bell is move is uh, having an impact. So we're going to use the impact here. So that's a pretty useful one. So we're going to do a print like that, and we're just going to print the length of that vector. Give us a kind of a an intensity for the impulse. Then we're going to try to reverse engineer this situation. And then we see we have a 800. You see, we have this spamming situation. So if we just filter that case by, uh, there we go. So we're going to say, I'm going to put this a bit ahead. Then we say the first thing we do, we filter. And the condition we filter is to have this greater, promote this as a parameter that uh, we're going to call this the minimum um, impulse. And the minimum impulse we want was the value we're getting was around 800. So let's put 900. So if we have 900, we go further and we spawn this on. Otherwise, we don't. So that's another thing. There we go. So, so it seems to a bit help, but um, there's a little bit of, yeah, you see, a little bit. So maybe just putting like a thousand, and then we're sure that it's not gonna happen. So that's the try and error. So you won't basically have a kind of um, enough impact, but not too much. So for example, you can check another parameter, which is the velocity. So we're gonna get the velocity. All right, velocity is here. And instead of checking so we're going to check the length of this guy as well, vector length, and then that's that's what we're going to check. And this time, I'm going to say we want a velocity at least a little bit bigger. So we're going to call this the minimum velocity. Uh, and we want at least I don't know, 10, something like that. So if we have 10, we can decide to trigger the sound. Okay, we want like maybe a velocity, minimum velocity of uh, 200. All right. 
So there's another thing we want maybe to add. And yeah, that's where the concurrent setting is going to be at use. It's just a little bit of weight with the retrigger. Good. And now just to help us to visualize a little bit better, we're going to do um, create dynamic material. Color base, okay. And then we're going to set material to, whoops, I didn't do that the right spot to be done inside my uh, ball like this. There we go. And trigger that. We're gonna do, okay. There we go. We're just gonna put it a little gray like this when it's happening. Right, a tiny bit and put it back as before, like this, and put it back like that. Okay, and set parameter, set material like that. No, it's not enough sensitive. So maybe we're gonna reduce our filter. Maybe 100. You see? There we go. So we have a perfect case of spamming object with individual sound. So we have multiple sound. Woohoo! So that's a bit ugly. So you can adjust and you can do multiply stuff like let's randomize. It's always good to randomize sound from range from 0.8 to 1.2 just change the pitch and we're gonna also add an attenuation setting so this this one is it helps to reduce the effect uh, attenuation setting here we go There we go. Just gonna, when we spawn, we're gonna put a little bit smaller, like uh, half of it. And that works mostly for any kind of sound. So if you decide to go for something different, let's try this for fun. So I hope uh, you enjoy it and it's it's uh, been useful for you. It was for me to <laughs> discover how to make those multiple sounds. So 
All right. Have fun.